scattered over 700,000 square kilometers of glistening Southern Pacific Ocean, 176 small tropical islands, which make up what is known as Tonga. And one, it seems, was chosen for the location of a rather amazing ancient structure. One of the most mysterious megalithic monuments in the world, an ancient trilithon known as the Megalith Gate of Hahamunga. The mainstream academic explanation for the site is as follows. Hahamunga is a megalith trilithon that was built around 1200 AD, built by a king of the time as the entrance to his royal compound, Heketa. As with many intriguing and confusing ancient structures upon Earth, if you dig further than mainstream attested views, you will often unearth another opinion, often suggesting a far longer, far more astonishing tale set much farther back within our past. And the Tonga Gateway is no exception. Although mainstream archaeology, through native folklore and currently accepted, chronological knowledge of the previous inhabitants of the island suggests that the Tonga Trilithon is but a mere 800 years old. There exist three rather large problems with this conclusion. Until, of course, erosion inevitably takes hold, drawing a line between a discernible archaeological feature and an apparent geological one. The Tonga Gateway now consists of three coral limestone slabs, each still weighing in at around 40 tons. Three rather large elephants in the room for mainstream archaeology. Like with all other trilithons dotted around the world, the documented primitive capabilities during modern historical timelines will continue to demonstrate a lack of credibility to the school-taught fanciful tales given for their construction. On the contrary, these sites indicate a once far more capable civilization left somewhere within Earth's very distant past. For example, there are many legends linking the Hahamanga Gateway to Maui, as William Corliss astutely put it, Maui is but a label, slapped upon everything found within the South Pacific which cannot be explained." End quote. Additionally, to disassemble the phony public narrative further, Corliss's own research, other explorers of the island, along with Eric von Daniken's compelling and comprehensive studies of the island, found that islanders, although willing to tell tall tales to tourists, lacked any reasonable replication skills at a later date. Put simply, they were lying. Indeed, although they spoke of a king some 800 years ago, the massive stones, being a gateway to his Heketa, after extensive exploration of the island by many people, especially behind the gateway, which the entire site is seemingly focused in on, no trace of a Heketa has ever been found. Some specialists who have studied the erosion patterns upon the coral stones have come forward with claims that the Tonga site is a ruin far older than currently thought, and that although the stones are rough in appearance today, they were much larger and also smoothly cut into squares using an unknown ancient technology. This, some claim, may have happened as far back as 10, maybe even 100,000 years ago. Was the Hahamanga Gateway some form of ancient stargate? Why place it exactly where it is? Why build it exactly how it was built? Who would go through such effort of transporting many 40-ton blocks of coral to this small island, then somehow constructing this once enormous and mysterious structure aligned as a gateway that led to nowhere? Or did it? There are many ancient mysteries still to be unraveled within ancient Egypt, and although they are rarely academically shared, the basalt floor found upon the Giza Plateau, being one such feature, located at the base of the Great Pyramids, possess some of the most compelling fragments of ancient advanced machinery anywhere on Earth, let alone Egypt. Additionally, there does indeed exist other areas upon the Giza Plateau that also exhibit these unquestionably compelling fingerprints left by an as yet not understood ancient advanced technology. One such place, known as Abu Ghraib, is a place that many alternative researchers assert could have once been some sort of ancient stargate. Originally built as a sun temple, 
constructed to represent the ritually vivifying power of the sun god Ra. It was one of six temples built upon the site. However, only two have been identified, Yuzerkov and that of Nayusera. At the base of the site, at the western end, an enormous obelisk has also been unearthed, which, according to experts, symbolize the resting place of the sun god Ra. The obelisk's base is a pedestal, with sloping sides and a square top. It is approximately 20 meters high and is constructed of red granite and limestone. Estimates of the combined height of the obelisk and base vary, although a number of independent researchers believe when the structure was built, the total height of the obelisk was most likely somewhere between 50 and 70 meters in height, an enormous height and indeed weight for any of the currently attested ancient Egyptian builders to have worked with. But what we find the most intriguing regarding this obelisk, and indeed ancient site, linking back to the advanced anomalies located upon the basalt floor, is the enigmatic drill holes found driven straight through the heart of this monolith and many of the other large granite stones which still litter the site. The holes undoubtedly completed using some form of high-rotation power tool. Clear, compelling evidence that whoever created this ancient work had access to astonishingly advanced technologies. Additionally, the site is also home to a number of enormous red granite blocks, each weighing in at several tons. Curiously, these massive blocks also exhibit the same uncanny precision cuts and extremely well-polished surfaces which are also found throughout ancient Egypt and the quarries thereof. All once mounted into position with such incredible precision, many investigators have concluded after visiting the site, just like the conclusions one is left with after exploring ancient Baalbek, that whoever laid these massive stones into position had an extraordinary technological prowess. Why does modern academia continue to deny such truths in favor of such mundane and incomplete testimonies as to the true origins and builders of ancient Egypt? How can we continue to be expected to believe, in the face of such compelling, overwhelming evidences, that these sites were merely the work of our more modern copper-wielding ancestors? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Who built the Great Pyramids? Why did they build them? If we take known Egyptian accounts as accurate, then many of the ancient structures upon the plateau were designed surrounding the subject of death. A civilization that believed when the sun set, it traveled through an underworld guarded by Anubis. In other cultures, which we believe re-inhabited sites, Ruins built with knowledge that we will now show far succeeded that which these people, who carved their own identities upon these structures, ever possessed. The Aztecs, although displaying similar primitive understandings of the path of the sun, interestingly shared similar beliefs to the Egyptians. Specific animals connected to astronomical objects are seen everywhere. These similarities in belief structures could be seen as evidence of a seagoing civilization. Ancient peoples crossing oceans, sharing their belief systems with each other. These people who artistically demonstrated their limited and heavily superstitious knowledge of the universe upon all these ancient sites sealed their own fate as impostors to the modern discerning man. Once one begins to explore the unbelievable accuracy the astronomical alignments, the seemingly impossible feats of block placements, you are seemingly presented with a controversial truth. How could a civilization who clearly believed that the Earth was not only flat, but that all experienced night at the same time, could have possibly known the information which was instilled within the construction of such sites, in particular the Giza Plateau? It should now be becoming clear that the ancient Egyptians, the Incas, Aztecs, Mayans, etc., etc., did not build these sites. However, the sites still exist, and their past function is still there to be explained. Why did so many of these civilizations, placed far closer to these original constructors than us, 
all agree that these structures were some sort of portal, allowing the passage of gods, spirits, or souls. Why were all these ancient civilizations, who undoubtedly worshipped the original creators of the cradle for their people, obsess over underworlds, portals, and stargates? Most ancient civilizations had belief systems surrounding death, the soul, and the passage thereof. But the strong draw to portals and gateways, somehow allowing the communication with an apparent other dimension, is undeniable. It seems so strongly entwined with these ancient people's beliefs, that these civilizations may have been aware of something regarding these amazing structures that we are not. False doors, for example. These doors to nowhere can be found all over Earth, yet interestingly, they are only found amongst the same uncannily astonishing stone cutting, which we are so often noting as indicative of a lost knowledge. Why were these doors created? Have they always led to nowhere? Or was there something extraordinary, once triggered by this precise web of ancient structures, all mysteriously aligned upon our planet? A function so many of these ancient civilizations were completely obsessed by.